pleased with our team's effort. Um, it's great to get a win on the road, to get a shutout win against a, a, a coach and Coach Fritz and a team in Tulane that we have a lot of respect for. Um, you know, we knew that going in it would be a battle. With guys like Nico Marley and Tanzel Smart in their uh, in their senior day, uh, but we uh, a lot of our guys came to compete. P.J. Walker uh, played a tremendous game, and uh, uh, we were able to grind it out and find a way to win at the end. As we move forward, um, get, getting ready for uh, for East Carolina, uh, our, our seniors' final home game. Uh, extremely excited for our, our our kids to be able to go out and compete uh, in front of their family and friends uh, one last time. A lot of respect for what Coach Montgomery is doing. Offensively, they present a number of challenges. Uh, Zay Jones is absolutely outstanding, and uh, as are many of their other players. You know, we know we, we know the summer as well, and he's done a great job in, as both a quarterback and a running back in their scheme. Their team is well coached. They know where to go with the ball. The offensive line is extremely efficient. Uh, defensively, a lot of those players we, we've had a, a chance to compete against, had a tremendous game down there last year, and we know that uh, it's going to be quite a challenge here on Saturday. Say questions for Coach Rule, please. Star one on your telephone keypad to join the queue, then the operator will introduce you. The first question will come from Zach Gelb at Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Hey, Coach, how are you? What's up, Zach? Uh, just when it comes to Raquel Armstead, uh, what's the status uh, for this weekend? He could have played last week. I mean, he was uh, – he wanted to play. Um, but, the, you know, Jagger had taken the practice reps. Isaiah had taken the practice reps. And I didn't feel like uh, Raquel was 100%. So he'd still be sort of in that – if we were in the NFL, that questionable category, I would say. And we'll see how uh, – you know, we'll, we'll see how it um, progresses uh, during the week. But I think we have enough good backs that we don't have to play him or we're not going to play him if he doesn't practice. If he's able to practice – then we'll we'll get them out there. Now, now going to your defense, you guys are top five in the nation in terms of total defense. I know you have a lot of high words of praise for Coach Phil Snow. I'm sure he's going to be a candidate uh, for the Broyles Award. Uh, but how about the job that Coach Snow has done this year, especially losing a few guys to the NFL? Well, I think uh, it's been fantastic, and it's it's been you know didn't start off the way we wanted against Army, but he's been patient. He's a teacher. Um, I, I would. Also, not want to just forget about talking about his defensive staff, Mike Saravo, Elijah Robinson, Francis Brown. I mean, Francis takes, you know, two receivers and turns them into corner, corners in less than a year. Uh, those guys have been have been tremendous, and I know Phil would give the credit to our defensive players. You know, I, I think our defensive players have bought into it, and really our whole program buys into it. You know, we, we play defense not just with our defense, by running the football, by trying to win third down, by shortening the game, you know, but uh, – I think Phil Snow's, you know, one of the best football coaches I've ever been around. I was his GA. I love him, and I think he's a tremendous teacher and coach. And then just with the game coming up this weekend, you know what's at stake. If you win, you get back to that conference championship game. Just having players that are battle-tested and having that experience last year, uh, does that help a lot going into this week, knowing what's on the line? Well, you know, uh, whatever's on the line this week's been on the line really since since the Memphis game. That You know, that's kind of the fun thing about a conference, you know, Everyone says, you, isn't it fun to control your own destiny? At the beginning of the year, every team controls their own destiny. And so, um, really, since we lost to Memphis, we've known that we can't lose again. Um, our kids have, have not been panicked by that. They've been uh, almost enjoying it. And, you know, we did it last year. We were able to make the plays down the stretch to win it. And so, we'll see if we can do it again this year. Um, you know, that, that's, that's what's at stake. The thing to me is, you know, who do we have to play? We have to play a dynamic passing game, uh, an offense that's, you know, averaging 500 yards a game, and so it, it's strength on strength, our defense versus their offense, and uh, it's 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 going to be a real real challenge. Coach, thanks. Have a good Thanksgiving. All right, brother. Thank you. We'll go next to Ronnie Woodward at Greenville Daily Reflector. Hey, coach. How you doing? Hey, Ronnie. How you doing, man? Good. Good. You kind of touched on it there, but I think last week you mentioned the whole playoff week to week thing. You know. This week you're facing the ECU team, and, and y'all are obviously a big favorite. But is the, the ultimate motivation still to to finish this thing off? You know that it's the last week, and, and obviously what you're playing for. You know, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, for me, um, there's no game that's more important to me every year that, than than the last game at home for our seniors. And so, uh, you know, there, there's obviously if we win, we know we have some good things that can happen. But uh, you know, I, I just I just want to do everything I can to make sure that our seniors walk off the field without any regrets. 
And so, you know, that was true when, you know, my first year when we were 2-10 and 10 and we lost that game at home and, and then we're able to go back the next week and, and win. I want our kids to, to, to finish it the right way. And so I'd love for them to be able to get to the championship game and all that stuff. But most importantly, I want them to walk off that field as winners because they've, they've turned the program around. They've done everything I've asked. Uh, this is the first group of kids. P.J. Walker was the first kid I went to see when I got the job. And for him to be a senior, um, I owe it to him to make sure he goes out, you know, with a win if, if I can, uh, you know, in his last game at home in front of his family and friends. Okay, makes sense. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. We'll go next to Dan Tatora at wakeupcalldt.com. Good afternoon, Coach. How are you? What's up, Dan? To, to look at this game, and I've spoken on that potential of, of the championship game and having another opportunity for Temple, just what this team means to you. I know you said, you know, it's on you to make sure that the guys go out with a victory. So just what you can say about these guys that are going out of the program and how important it is to build some longevity for them and just what they've meant to you. Well, I mean, they're, they're the first group of kids that I recruited. And, and I, I, you know, I, I you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, they've, they've taken the program. They came in as freshmen on blind faith. They stuck around after going two and 10 and, and, um, you know, they, they, you know, they went through a six and six year where we didn't get to go to a bowl game. They went through a year last year where we, you know, got the 10 wins and, and then, you know, lost the championship game, lost the bowl game. And here they are again this year, some early adversity and they battle. I mean, these, these guys are tough and they're survivors and they're winners. And, and so I, I don't think it's on me to, to make sure that they win the game. I think it's on me to make sure I do everything I can to do my part. And it's on every one of them to make sure that they do their part. And that's what I, that's what I love about this group is that they're workers. They're, they're tough. Uh, nothing phases them. And, um, you know, they've, they've come from all different backgrounds to get to where they are, which is they're all graduating. They're all good football players. And they're, uh, they're have a chance to, to get to nine regular season wins. And, you know, when they got to eight this past week, they're the winningest two years in Temple's history. And uh, it's, it's because of these kids and the work that they've done. You decided to stay with Temple and, and continue to coach there. Other coaches have decided to stay in the American. What can you say about the competitiveness of the conference? And even though if the polls don't adequately show it, just what this conference has done in the last few years? Well, you know, I, I love coaching Temple. It's a great place for me. I, I made that decision. I don't really think about what other guys do. I mean, I, I, just, I have a place here that has uh, a tremendous administration. I have a place here that has – a tremendous president, athletic director, board of trustees. I have great kids. I have a great recruiting base. It's been my home. We get to play good football in a good conference versus other good teams. We get to play great regional, um, you know, non-conference games. And so I've been extremely happy here, and, and um, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be the coach here. Thanks, Coach. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye, brother. We'll go next to Mark Narducci at the Philadelphia Inquirer. Matt, um, the, the ECU coach was talking about Zay Jones moving to the outside this year. Do, what, do you see much difference in him from, from last year when you guys had to go up against him what you've seen on film this year? No, I mean, you know, it's a different offense. You know, it's just, you know, different, uh, different um, you know, a couple different players, and it's a different offense. You know, obviously different coaches. and um, But, uh, you know, he's a great player. Great players shine wherever they go, and, you know, they, they move him all around all, right, this year. I mean, they've done a tremendous job of, you know, finding ways to target him. He doesn't just line up in one spot where you can sort of, hey, let's try to take him away. I mean, he, he's just a, a, a tremendous player, and, and not just because of his physical abilities. He had, definitely has those. But he just plays in a tremendously competitive way. And, uh, you, know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, it's always an honor to have a chance to play against guys like that. And, and one other thing, is there, is there any update yet, or is it too early on Nate, Nate L. Smith? Uh, it was probably too early, but I'd say I'd say he probably was not playing. That'd be my guess, you know. Um, you know, but I, I I don't know until kids haven't even gotten here yet. You know, this is this is fall break. We have no school here. We're the only we're the only we're the, the only people on campus. So um, those kids, the kids get here today at one, and uh, we'll see where how he is. Okay, thank you. Sure. The next Any question comes from Sean Pastor at Owls Daily. Hi Matt, how are you? Good, Sean. What's up? Okay, so uh, regarding ECU, I wonder, you know, with the kind of looks like they changed the quarterback, I wonder if you could just compare what Minshew and Nelson, if there's any differences you see there, anything that sort of tweaked anything with Minshew in there now? Well, or, you know, I they both run the offense it. extremely well, you know, and I, I'm not sure who we'll see. Um, yeah. But they, uh, 
you know, they, they do a tremendous job of, of identifying what coverage you're in and getting the ball out quickly. And, you know, I mean, it's just, it's as well uh, X to node out as anybody you'll face. I mean, these guys really know how to throw the football. And, um, you know, they do a nice job with Summers of finding ways to, to run the football, both, you know, conventionally and with him as sort of a, for lack of a better term, wildcat quarterback, even though you know he can play quarterback and he can throw it. So you have to, you know, treat him accordingly. So I think both quarterbacks run the offense extremely well. You know, both give them a tremendous chance to win. And, um, you know, I think from our perspective, you have to just, you have to, when you face someone that, you know, like Coach Montgomery and his staff that really understands X's and O's as a defense, you have to try to defend the X's and O's and handle the matchups as well as, you know, you can. And you can't really do two different game plans based upon who the quarterback is. Now, is Summer sort of a different, uh, you know, you, you faced him as, as sort of half of their quarterback job last year. Um, is the way he's running, I don't know, out of a different sort of position sometimes this year, is, is he a different challenge as a runner? Does he do anything differently this way, this year, the way he runs? Whether well, I mean, you know, he's playing tailback. Yeah. yeah, when he plays tailback, I mean, he's he's a really good runner. And um, he's a, you know, a really competitive kid and, you know, um, you know, he, he's also can, you know, you know, was thoughts that when he first came in, I think that we thought maybe he was going to be a receiver for them. So he's just a tremendous athlete. I mean, he can play, he can play receiver, he can play running back. And then when he goes in at quarterback, he obviously gives them all the, you know, all the runs that he can now run, whether it's zone read, whether it's just, you know, quarterback runs where they gain an extra blocker by using the tailback. But you can't just, you know, attack it like it's a wildcat and go sell out for the run because he's obviously a guy who can throw. So he presents a real challenge. And um, he's already on the field, so they can sneak him in there on you. You know, make it hard to make it hard to recognize and hard to defend. Okay, and their defense, kind of the one thing that really jumped out is it took them about seven or eight games. They had maybe one sack. I mean, what they've given up a lot of numbers wise. What do they? What concerns do they present defensively? Well, you know, I mean, we're 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 sort of you know we're we're kind of a two back run team, and the one thing that's always given us trouble is you know, the three, four teams that have three, 300 pounders out there. And, uh, you know, that's what they are, you know? And so we played against those kids last year, Dimitri McGill and all the guys, and we had a really hard time running the ball down, uh, in, you know, in Greenville last year, had to, had to kind of drop back and throw it. And PJ had to, you know, get us back in the game with that throw to Robbie. And, you know, you know, we, we had a hard time scoring. So if they're a team that, that their matchup with the three, four and the big guys inside, has given us problems, and they're really active players. They're they're physical players, and so you know we don't want to get away from who we are. We want to do what we do, but we have to understand that we're not you know we're not running it against 250 pound defensive ends. These guys are 295 and 305, so it's, that's that's probably the biggest challenge. That sounds similar to Memphis, for I guess. Memphis, UCF, um, you know, it's all really sort of all the you know three four teams. Um, Cincinnati, to a little bit of a degree, did some of that, so. Um, you know, we have to, we have to, you know, it's just a, a battle. It's a matchup battle. That's, that's not an easy one to win.